we're recording. Go ahead, okay. Dixie. So I'm Dixie Hill. I am a director. Um, I am a lead team Zaya Wild. Um, I'm like five down from Erica. Um, and I'm just going to go over from what I've learned from my experience um, with like the best tips that I've found. Um, so like the first thing I want to talk about is gathering the courage and confidence in what you're doing. Um, and I kind of I lacked this at the beginning when I first became a Zaya rep. Um, I people would bring it up like, "Hey, you're, you're selling leggings, or what? Like, what's that Zaya stuff?" And I was like, "Oh, yeah, just whatever." Like, I shrugged it off. I didn't want to talk about it. I was like, totally, like, not important. We can't talk about that. Like, and I think my business at the beginning kind of hurt from that because I didn't truly believe in myself to believe in the product to say like, hey, this is Zaya, like, let me, you wanna feel it, you wanna try it out, we can swap clothes in the bathroom. Uh, now, actually, like a couple of days ago, me and some girlfriends went out and it got brought up and these girlfriends have never once denied my stuff. Um, these are bridesmaids in my wedding. And um, one of them was like, I'm surprised, cause I wore jeans, the slouch twist back tank and like a jacket over it. And they're like, I'm surprised you're not all Zaya'd out. Like, actually, I do have Zaya on. This shirt, it's Zaya. This bra, I flipped on my, and like showed the back. It was my strappy bra. I'm like, this bra is Zaya. They're like, no. I'm like, yeah, like feel it. This is top quality stuff. And she's like, what? This is Zaya? Yes. She's like, no. So I'm like, tag, yes. And like, if you don't truly believe in what you're going to, what you're selling, what you're offering to customers, then they're not going to believe that either. Um, and I think that's super important. If you, and Erica has said this before, if you can't scream it from the top of the Empire State Building, like I am in drug sales, I sell leggings, like you're in the wrong business, girlfriend. Um, a huge thing as well as branding yourself. We all sell Zaya. Um, Susie down the street sells Zaya. But what's gonna set you apart from Susie down the street? and what's going to keep your customers coming back to you um you sorry i'm like getting distracted by that chat okay um so with that starting with visual branding and some of the girls actually were talking about this last week with setting a team name for yourself and setting an image um and how do you come up with that like i'm zaya wild that's my team um, those who know me knows that fits pretty perfect. Um, and, and actually that's not what initially what I was like my, my group chat with my girls was, I think it was like war Zaya warriors or something like that. And I believe we're all truly warriors, but I was sitting down one day and I was like, wow, that's wild. It's like, that that's it. Like it came to me like, like Bob ding, that's Zaya wild. Um, and finding the name for you and your team is important, I think, because that's what you stand for. So if you don't know, if you can't come up with what you, um, what you think, you know, think about your values, what values for you, or ask some of your closest friends and family, what are some adjectives when you think of me? Give me three or four of the adjectives that describe me. Um, and that can help you in that as well. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything and cover all my notes. Um, with that, once you do come to that, you have your logo. So um, I recommend working with a graphic designer. Um, and I think there are some girls that cover uh, Zaya Fires um, that will do them for a price. But I mean, bottom line, it's like 50 bucks for a general logo. What is that, like two nights out? So you stay home two nights and you advance your business, which bottom line, it's gonna come right back to you. Um, if you're cheap, like me, um, you're gonna attempt to do it yourself. And you know, Canva is amazing and I love Canva, but I would not recommend using the templates in there um, just because it's a template, so you, Sally down the street, Joe down the road. You guys are all gonna use the same template, but the only thing that's different is your name, right? 
Um, so you're going to want to really specialize that and not, I wouldn't recommend using the templates there. I recommend going through a graphic designer. They're going to give you the images that you're going to need. Um, when picking your logo though, there's one thing that's huge to think about and that is going to be your color psychology. How is your logo going to make your audience feel? So we don't think about this. And if you don't know about color psychology, take five minutes after the call and Google it because it's, there's so much out there on it. Um, so the colors that you put out in your logo, you want to keep a theme um, and stay consistent with it. So when they see those colors on the street, oh, those colors remind me of Zia Wild. Ding, there we go. I'm on somebody's brain, right? Um, so like say red, red is bold, it's fierce. I know a lot of food companies actually use red for um, their logos. So blues, blues are gonna make your audience feel calm. Pinks, feminine, women. So if you aren't familiar with color psychology, I would strongly recommend looking into it and looking into the color schemes that you want your audience to feel. Um, same with that, specific fonts. Once you pick a font, girlfriend, stick with it. Being consistent is gonna be like the number one thing that you're gonna want to focus on. Um, you don't wanna be all over the board. You don't wanna be Comic Sans one day to scripture the next day. You wanna set a theme and stick with it. Um, like I said, the colors, because how you make your audience feel is going to come back to you. And it's like a roundabout thing. Um, so like there's the trainings, I'm gonna move on subjects here, bouncing all over. Um, so you've gone through the trainings, all the team calls, the units, you know how to show up every day on social media, but it's still not enough. Um, I'm sure some others feel this way. There's nothing happening from it. There's not any enrollments. There is not um, any new customers. You're not getting attention for new parties. Um, so by show of hands, how many feel like you're pretty consistent, you show up every day, but it's just not getting anywhere? No one, you guys are all master net. Awesome, I should take notes. Um, So you could post, um, I see a few hands now. You could post um, good quality stuff and you're not getting any interaction. But Susie down the streets posts a picture of her dog and she just got 14 enrollees. Uh, so what are you doing wrong? Um, the next couple points I'm gonna point out might be a little bit blunt. So I'm just gonna cut it to you though. Um, Number one, you aren't being consistent. So you can show up every day, but are you being consistent? If you're posting in your VIP group three times a day during the week, Saturday comes and you drop off, guess what? You're forgotten about. Facebook recognizes this stuff and we haven't figured it out, but one day I'm determined to figure out the system of Facebook. But if you're dropping off, Facebook's gonna think that your group's dropping off and that people aren't interested in that and they're gonna stop showing it. Facebook wants to show what people are interested in. Um, a big part of that is picking a platform. Pick one platform and own it. That is your platform. May, it may be Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I don't know what other social media is out there, but once you pick your main one, own it, girl. You're gonna be on that social media platform every day. If you post three times every day, you stay consistent, post three times every day. Make sure that it's right around the same times. Um, your scheduling post, if you are going to be out of town, you're going to be busy. It takes five minutes to schedule a post, girl. Um, if you haven't noticed, there's a huge trend with consistency. Um, number two, you lack clarity in your message. So with that, um, what are you trying to tell your customers? What are you showing up every day to say, hey, 
you're not just saying, hey, here's some leggings. Target does that. Walmart does that, right? If we wanted to just sell leggings, we would do so in a department store. Um, I believe, truly believe that Zaya is so much more than selling a pair of leggings. Um, we have morals behind them and ethics. And when it comes down to it, what is your why? Your why has to be strong enough that you put that into your customers, right? Um, for me, it is, um, sorry, my watch is going off. For me, my message, so I'm a young mom of two. I work full time. I gained a bunch of weight before my kids and I lost it after my kids. So my message, my audience is young moms who are trying to get back in shape, who are trying to find their confidence again. The message I want to send them is I want them to feel confident in the skin that God gave them. I don't want them to cry. I don't want them to hate shopping. I don't want them to hate looking in the mirror. I want them to feel confident and own the skin that they live in every day because at the bottom line, you're in it. Can't get out of it. So you might as well learn to love it, right? So that's my message. And how I send that through is, I can't just say that. I mean, I could, but no one's going to listen to me. Um, so if you're not like being clear with your message, you need to revamp. If your audience can't tell what's going on in there, you need to switch it. Whether it's asking one of your closest friends or a teammate, hey, can you scroll through my VIP a little bit and tell me, what does my VIP say to you? What, what can you gather from it? Um, and if your audience you're aiming for ain't getting the message, then time to refigure. Sit down and refigure why it's, and find your stronger why. It's down there, you just gotta discover it. Um, number three, your info is not helpful. Yeah, I post the restock picture every day. I got it straight from the email. Post the prices. How is that not helpful? So like I said, if, if we wanted to sell leggings, we could go to Target. I'm sure someone would love to buy Zaya up in a department store. But again, what's going to brand you and your Zaya business apart from Susie down the street, Old Navy Target? Um, you don't want to just be posting the same videos that everyone else is posting. I mean, yeah, they're cool, but they're not, they're not distinctive. They're not going to say, hey, that, that made me think of Dixie. They're going to say, oh, yeah, I've seen that on such and such pages already. Um, oh, I could post this really cool bra and a um, default graphic picture from the website. This just restocked. And hope that somebody catches eye and thinks it's really cool on a model. I mean, our models are spectacular, but bottom line, they're still a model. And people want to see it on real people. People want to see the outfit in Spose. Are you going on and grabbing some graphics? Are you taking that extra five, 10 minutes? Um, and if you don't have the time, check with your team. Hey, does anybody have these images quick? Or if you have the time, put them out there. Hey, I just grabbed these from the market uh, group. Thought if anyone could use them and need a spare minute. Um, like I said, if people wanted to see the same stuff over and over again, they could just go to the website. Um, again, with that is you don't, if your audience is mothers, young moms trying to work out or even older moms, you're not gonna wanna post 19 year old little girls wearing these Zaya leggings to the club. That's not gonna catch their eye. Um, you want to gather the images for the audience that you want attention to. Um, making it relevant is huge. And number four, not connecting with your audience. Um, whether this is in a VIP or a party, are you 
reaching out? Are you having the conversations? Just, hey, how's it going to one of your hostess that's coming up? The more you talk to your hostess and gain their trust, especially if they don't know you, um, the more likely that you're going to boost their confidence, that they're going to be more interactive in those parties, which we all know a more interactive host is going to lead to a more successful party. Um, following up with your leads. You just had a girl in a party who loved Zaya, um, ordered a crop down, was super interactive through all of it. What does that say to you? Potential rep. I want her on my team. She's got all the qualities. Did you follow up with her though? Hey, just wanted to check in. How's your order fit? Great. You're going to add her as a friend now. You're going to creep on her page. You're going to see that she's got a beautiful family and a little girl that's three years old. I just was scrolling and seeing your little girl. She's so cute. How old is she? Oh, she's three. Mine too. What's her name? You're connecting. Building those relationships, following up. If you're not connecting with your audience, they're gonna lose interest. They don't want to follow somebody they don't know or care for, um, something, somebody that offers them nothing. Um, asking for the sale is so important, but in the right situation. Uh, hey girl, I know you love those black metallics. We actually just had some blue metallics that just restocked. I know you would love them. You would look great in them. What size would you like me to order for you? Asking for the sale. If you don't ask for it, then it might not come. Opportunity isn't gonna knock on your door unless you open it first, um, sadly. Um, especially when you, like I live in a small town. I have, I live in a town of like 600, nobody around. And I was surprised that there are like six Zaya reps in my town. And I was like, whoa, I never heard of Zaya until I signed up. Now they're everywhere. It's like when you buy a truck and you don't see any other trucks and that it's like, why, why has everyone got my truck? Um, and that's kind of how it is. So you're gonna, you're gonna want to build that relationship with those customers because otherwise, like I said, they're going to Sally down the road. And next thing you know, they're signed up under her team. And there's a missed out opportunity. If you're not opening your own doors, they might not open for you. Um, and finally, how can you serve the other person? So this has been said before, and in case we all need a reminder, um, this isn't about you, it's about them. And what can you offer for them? Yeah, it might help me buy a Traeger grill, buy a truck, pay for daycare, groceries. But again, if that's what it is, is monetary, then you need to remember your why and think what can you offer your community? Because those who remember that why and put out to the community are going to gain so much more than those who think dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. Um, being authentic, just being you is gonna be huge. Nobody cares if your hair is a mess, you ain't got makeup on, you haven't showered in three days, they just want you to show up and be you. Um, and actually, I, I forgot that for a while and I, I didn't show up last month and it showed I didn't show up. I was in a rut and I was selfish and I took the time and just said, screw the world. And at the end of the day, at the end of the month, I was like, somebody reminded me, like, just be you. Nobody cares that you're having a bad day, hair day. Nobody cares if you have a planet growing on your nose. Just show up. They just want you to be you. Um, and bottom line, that's really what it is. Um, one last thing I wanted to touch on, and I'm really bad at this, is stop saying no. Jenny from down the road from high school wants to catch up. She just moved back home. She's got three kids and can go for a girl's drink. Thank God, I got so much stuff to do. I don't have time to go out. I have laundry. I have kids. No. Mm -mm. But when you don't go out, when you say no, you're saying no to opportunities. 
Um, I am constantly reminded that we interview every single day, whether it's a potential customer, a potential rep, even another rep, somebody on your team, you interview every day, every day you are in showcase. Um, and at Ryan actually, who's my fiance, he pointed out, he's like, you, you get dressed up every time we go out somewhere, you do your hair and your makeup. Yeah, I might, but I also get, I really like those leggings. Thanks. I actually sell them. Did you want my link? Let me join you. Let me sign you up to my VIP group. I run a lot of sales in there. And it's like the, you're walking billboard. You are walking advertisement. So if you're not on full speed advertisement, I'm going to be me. I'm going to rock this shit mode. Then the billboard might just get burned down. So stop saying no, say yes, put on a pretty face and just go out and have fun. I think that's all I got for you. Dixie, way to light it up. Are you okay now? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so good. I loved it. Um, I feel like you brought a lot of really important things to the forefront and we appreciate you being you 100% and um, what did Bree say earlier? Laying the smack down. I can't remember what she said, but... <laughs> I loved it. So let's unmute ladies. Let's give her some love. If there's any questions, feel free to comment in the chat, but everybody's just giving you a ton of love in the chat. So unmute yourselves, ladies. Thanks, Dixie. Thanks, Dixie. Thanks, Dixie. Thank you. Thank you, Dixie. Thank you. Great job, Dixie. Love you, girly. Thank you. Thank you.